Hello everybody, it's Farm Sim Guy here. Okay, something a little bit different tonight, something I thought I'd try on the channel for the first time. But uh, a few of you asked me how I create my thumbnails, how I edit my videos, so I thought I'd do a video where I gave you some tips and insider information for how I put things together. And the first one is uh, thumbnails. A lot of you have asked about my thumbnails, how I get those, so I thought I'd just show you. I use Photoshop. I have access to Photoshop because I work as a graphic designer in my job, um, but I'm going to show you how to create some thumbnails using Pixlr, which is an online free piece of software that does everything that you would need to to create your thumbnails. So without further ado, let's jump in and have a play with it. So this is Pixlr, pixlr.com, P-I-X-L-R.com. This is the homepage. This is what it looks like. Now they do have two options here. They have advanced Pixlr E or playful Pixlr X. For everything you're going to need, Pixlr X is fine. So you click on Pixlr X at the top, or you can select it from down here, and it will take you to this page. And what you want to do from here, the first thing you want to do is just create new. You don't need to log in, you don't need to create an account or anything, you can start using it straight away. So if you click on create new, it gives you some presets, some standard settings that you can use. Now, full HD is what I would recommend doing them in. Uh, YouTube will take uh, bigger sizes than that, so Ultra HD down here, which is 4K, but they will only take thumbnails up to 2 megabytes in size, so Full HD is a good balance between high quality and not being too big from a file size perspective. So once you've selected Full HD, click Create, and it will give you this layout here. So you can zoom in and out using your scroll wheel on your mouse. Uh, the checkerboard is actually the size of your document. Down the right-hand side here, You've got zoom controls, so if you don't want to use your scroll wheel, use the zoom controls there. And you've got layers, and I'll come back to layers in a minute. On the left-hand side, you've got your tools, and we'll go through these uh, in order, and I'll show you how some of these work while we're well, while we're building our thumbnail. But properties means you can rotate, you can change the size of elements of your thumbnail. Um, lots of different things in here, so you can resize, canvas size, rotate add a background color, things like that. The next one is the select tool. Now what I'm going to do, just so you can see this, is I'm going to import an image because I'm going to need to do this later on. So if I click add image at the bottom, I know I'm jumping around a bit, but if I click on add image at the bottom and browse, I've already started a folder in my uh, computer, but let's just, just take our logo. Um, so we've selected the logo. Now you can create a new image here, but we don't want to do that because we've already created our, our canvas here. So we're going to add it to the current image and if you click this, add to the current image, see what it's done here? You've got your base layer, and it's added a second layer here. So it's keeping it on a separate layer to the one you're on. Now that's obviously imported very big. So what I want to do here is zoom out slightly. And you can see it's got these squares on the corners, which means we can size it down. So what we'll do is we'll do that, and we'll move it into the middle. So there we go, there's the logo, and we can zoom back in again, now we know it's in the middle of our canvas. The circle at the top here, lets you rotate it. Now if you ever do something you don't want to, you wish you hadn't done, the easiest way to do it is either to click the undo button at the bottom here, or Control z on a keyboard works as well. So there you go, that's an image imported. Okay, the second one, the Arrange tool, which is the one we started on, and I said I needed an image for that. Basically, that means you can move something around wherever you want on your page. Again, rotate and flip, and you can make it more transparent. Um, the Blend Mode tools we'll come back to in a little while, but for now, transparency is probably the main one you're going to want to think about there. So you can make that work for you. Next one is Crop. So crop will crop the canvas, so it will change the size of your canvas. For what we're doing today, we probably don't need to do that. Uh, I'll just say as well, every now and again you get an ad pop up here. I've got a blocker on, but it still pops up with the ad. So you just need to close that. So yeah, crop um, resizes the actual canvas. That's the main board of your of your image. So we don't really want to do that. To, to crop it, you hit the enter key. But like I said, we don't want to do that, so we'll just undo. That'll take us back to our full size canvas. Cutout, now this is quite a good one. 
um, cut out allows you to, you've got to select the layer that you want to cut out. But for example, our logo here, let's say I don't want the green background on this one. So what I want to do is do a magic cutout here. You can do a shape cutout. We'll just demo that where you can draw a box and it'll cut out the certain element that you select. Um, but the magic cutout is a really good one where I select the green in the background and it removes it. And then what you've got is now a transparent logo. So this bit, if you put an image behind it, would show through. The next one is, is color adjustments. You can see as I move those up and down, you can go things black and white. Saturation, you lift your colors up. Um, lots of different controls over there. I mean, obviously, personal preference for how you want to play with those. But you can have some fun there. Oh, I'm having a right disco now, look at that. Brightness as well, exposure, contrast. I mean, you can go the full hog here. Um, so many different options there. Filter tools, again, lots of different things you can use here to enhance your image. If you've got a blurry image, you can sharpen it. Uh, you can smooth things off if they're not very good. It doesn't really work with this image, but we'll uh, we'll find something in a little while that'll uh, help. And you know, there's some little uh, effects as well. There you go, pixelate, which is good if you want to hide a little element of your of your page or something. So lots of things again to play with there, and a load of effects too. So again, different effects that you can add to your images. Uh, my advice with this would be, don't go over the top. Um, have a play with them, but to be honest, most of the time, it's personal preference. But if you've got a style or something you want to to treat your images with, knock yourselves out. Liquify is an interesting tool. I'm not sure what you would use it for, but again, it gives you the option to play with things. See what it's doing there? It's just moving elements around. Uh, that's on push. You can do enlarge, where you basically click and it balloons out, which is quite good fun. Shrink. Go back in. This will never be the same again. Swirl right. As you move it around, it swirls it. Swirl left. Does obviously the same in the other direction, and restore puts it all the way back to normal. Look at that! So all your uh, hacked-up stuff gets returned to how it should be. Very nice. Retouch gives you a set of tools to play with. Let's select the layer again. Um, you can lighten or darken your image and you can paint over it. Probably not something you're going to need for your thumbnails, but the tools are there if you want to use them. Uh, drawing is pretty much that. Gives you the opportunity to draw anywhere on your on your document if you want to do that. Um, text. Text is brilliant. Uh, add new text. So what we can do here is add some text in. So you select the side here and you type in my awesome thumbnail for example um, and then you have I can't tell you how many different fonts there are available to you here I mean, you are spoiled for choice so many and there's some really good ones in here as well so you can actually create some really nice nice effects here blow the size up if you've got it over two lines I double clicked in it then by the way to edit it uh, you can bump the size right up line spacing can shrink it together letter spacing space the text apart you can add a background to the text you can add an outline to the text which is quite good fun pick a color punch out gets rid of the fill in the middle of the text and a drop shadow as well which you can't really see because we haven't got an image in the background add an element has some overlays and pre-made borders here some of these are premium and to be honest I don't use any of these because you can have everything that you want available to you but there you go we've added some dust there you can change the transparency of that just close the ad again and finally the one that you're going to use like we've already talked about because we put my logo in is browse and adding images in so select your image okay it add to your current document can resize it down when you've brought it in and it'll create layers for you so you'll see now there's our original logo that we brought in in the layers 
there's our text that we added, there's our background, and there's the other logo that we've just imported. Now, we don't want any of that because we're about to start and create our own image. So what you can do is click on the three dots here, it gives you the name of that layer, the transparency of it, and you can move these about so I can move that down or up, but I can also delete it. I'm going to delete all of these because we're actually going to jump in now and create a really nice thumbnail. So first things first, we're going to add an image. So we'll click on here, browse to our image. We've got a nice case magnum photo here that we've taken from Farming Simulator. Click open and we're going to add current. And there you go. Great shot of case magnum can move that about, we can see that it's the right size for the canvas in the background. You've got these lovely lines that snap the image so you know when it's centered on the page. So we're pleased about that. It's a nice shot to start with. Second, let's import the Farming Simulator logo just to give it a little bit of professionalism. So we'll click on Browse again. Click on the Farming Simulator logo. This is a transparent logo that I got off the web. So we can add current to that. And there it is. It's a bit big at the moment. So we can size that down. There we go. That looks pretty good. And then I think we will add in some text. So we add some new text in. Let's pop it in the top corner there. Let's shrink the size down. Now, we can left align it, so all the tools that you would expect in a normal word processor are there. So let's edit that text. Let's just type in Lone Oak Farm. Let's select a font that we like. Let's find a nice chunky one. There you go. Daddy Day. That looks pretty good. And we will do it in case colors. So we click on here. You can actually use this dropper tool as well and go and match it to something on the image. So there you go, exactly the right case color there. Now I'm thinking that's maybe not standing out against the background. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to put an outline around it and that is going to be black as well. So let's use the dropper again and match it to a case kind of gray black. There we go, Lone Oak Farm. So we're happy with our text. Just move it away from the edge a bit more. And in fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to edit it slightly. So we'll scroll back up here. Lone Oak, I'm going to put a return in. So it just sits anchored in the corner of the uh, frame there. Now the final thing we want to do is we want to just add in the Farm Sim Guy logo it's rather large, let's zoom that down, shrink that down in size. Yeah, we want to add the Farm Sim Guy logo in the bottom corner there. And I don't want the green background on it, so I'm going to go to the cutout. I'm going to do the magic cutout. And I'm going to click on the green. And there we go. Now I'm happy with that as a thumbnail. I think that works really, really well. So what I can do now, I can hit the save button. And it will give me the option to call it thumbnail. I want it, I'm going to save it as a JPEG, 90%. It'll actually give you the file size here, so you know if you go over um, the 2 megabyte limit. So even 100% JPEG quality, there's 1.8 megabytes, 1920 by 1080, which is the pixel size of it. So you can click on download there, and it will download your image. And just to prove that it worked, I'm going to open it in Photoshop, and there we go. Brilliant thumbnail images for your YouTube channels, done with Pixlr, which is a web-based image editor. Now, I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed this. Like I said, short and sweet, and I'll keep an eye open for a few more of these coming down the line if you enjoyed this. So, for now, from me, the Farm Sim Guy, happy editing, happy thumbnail designing, and I'll see you all again very soon.